All right, and hello there. Welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor, your host, as you probably already know if you've been watching my show, but I always got to say, introduce myself. Thanks very much for taking the time to tune into this very special episode where I'm doing yet another all-electric vehicle review. This time, I'm extremely stoked to have one of the brand new in Canada 2024 Acura ZDX. This is the Type S model or ZDX if you're south of the border or other countries. Uh, I'll be pronouncing it Z for the most of my uh, broadcast here, my video, so please don't get upset if I do that. That's just the way we roll here in Canada. First, I want to thank Honda Canada for allowing me the use of this press vehicle. They've been very accommodating in asking me to drive this one and then I'll be uh, looking actually the, at the sibling of this, the Honda Prologue, later on in September as well, the later in the early fall. But I got my, was able to get my hands on the ZDX and I'm extremely excited about that. It's a fantastic vehicle. So sit back, relax, and let me tell you all about it. Now the ZDX does use the same nameplate as its earlier sibling back from, I guess, a couple of decades ago when it first came out as an ICE vehicle, uh, an ICE variant, a little bit more future thinking in design. And I think Acura has captured a lot of that design language here in the, the newer ZDX um, because you see some of those raked angles and some of those sharp, uh, sharp points here. And that's, uh, to me, reminiscent of the kickback to the older ZDX product that they had. But this is futuristic and it's an EV and it does stand out a bit, especially in this beautiful color scheme that they have here. Um, I've had a lot of heads that have turned in this, but the design is definitely a lovely design. It's uh, got a very nice stance to it. It's got very nice um, flow to it. Everything just, you know, it just seems to be put into the right place. A lot of function behind that design as well. And again, that's the beauty of what you can do with an all electric platform. And the neat thing about the, the early, these first Honda slash Acura offerings is that they're based on GM's Altium platform. So they're utilizing these platforms and building their own uh, first um, all electric here in North America based on that platform. And I can tell you folks for the, for the amount of uh, Altium vehicles that I've now reviewed being in the Blazer EV, which is a, a cousin to this, um, we've got the, uh, of course, the Lyric as well, and we've got a couple others that'll be coming up. It's so far it has seemed to be a very solid and very capable electric platform that GM has been touting for four years now. I mean, forget when we saw the first pictures, but quite a long time. So it's actually really nice to start seeing that platform in deployment and in use. And I can tell you folks, it works extremely well. If you've had any reservations about GM's Altium platform, I would tell you to take those reservations away in, you know, like any negativity you have, it's a very solid, good platform. And I can tell you that Acura has done that extremely well. So they've taken the base software that comes from GM. You'll see a lot of similar uh, fonts and in looks in the Blazer as an example, but then they've tweaked it for their own use, you know, especially in the infotainment side of things. And they blended it extremely well so that everything in this thing works extremely, extremely well. And I'm gonna talk more about that. So from the design, it's polarizing, yet very sleek, very smooth, very capable. And it does, you know, appear, it does show luxury. And this, remember, Acura is a luxury brand for Honda. So this is not a cheap vehicle. And I'll talk about pricing later on. Now, for as far as specs goes, uh, this does have a 102 kilowatt hour battery, which is bigger than uh, Blazer's 85 or so-ish uh, uh, battery. So you do get more stable range out of this than you would a Blazer. And that would be what, what I would compare this vehicle to from a form and function perspective. This is backed up all that weight, of course, because these things weigh about 6,000 pounds, um, backed up by, in this case, uh, the Type S model that they've given me the top spec does have an air adaptive air suspension ride. And you actually have a button that you can lower it and make it a little lower and make it a little higher. So that's a nice touch. It has adaptive uh, regular suspension in the um, the, the A-spec model, so not air, but your adaptive springs and coils and all that kind of stuff. Now, when we look at how that's related to power, and this is the Type S, so as I mentioned, this is the top spec, it pumps out 500 horsepower and 544 pound-feet of torque. 
that's quite a lot for a vehicle that even though it weighs just over 6,000 pounds. If you go down to the A-Spec trim, uh, both of these are all-wheel drive. It only comes in Canada in all-wheel drive variant. In the States, it does come in a single motor variant, so you would have to check the website to get more details on specs there. Uh, but here in Canada, it's only all-wheel drive, and the A-Spec uh, trim has 490 horse, so just slightly less horsepower, but about 100 or so less foot-pounds of torque coming in at 437. Um, it actually has a ca the capability to tow 3,500 pounds as well. That's the rating, and that's pretty good. But without a trailer hookup, range would be about 489 kilometers on the A-Spec. On this one, the Type S, it, they rated at 444, sorry, 447 kilometers. Hey, every kilometer helps. Um, and that's EPA spec. I'll tell you a little bit later uh, what I'm getting because I'm not finished driving this thing, but I can tell you that I'm getting really good mileage range for a vehicle of this size and weight. Compared to um, the, the uh, Blazer EV, that, which is the sibling, which is the underpinnings for this vehicle, uh, there's a, the uh, ZDX is about 700 pounds plus um, heavier, and that's due to that battery size increase. Uh, and one thing though, they maintain perfect 50-50 weight distribution, and that's really hard to do. This car has it, so that means it handles well for a heavy mid-size SUV. Remember that, this is not a race car, this is a mid-size family hauler that can put stuff and tow stuff, so it's not going to be uh, as agile around our track as some other vehicles will be that not in this class, but it gets the job done and it looks fantastic. Charging the ZDX, very capable against standard 11 kilowatt AC charging. That seems to be uh, what most people are going with at this, these points of time, which again relates to that you can charge this up from a 10 to 80, 90%, which is your typical home rating overnight using your off peak hours. That's what these rates are designed for. And then stopping for a DC charge, which is capable of up to 190 kilowatts. So I just wanted to show some rolling video of the interior. This is the front section, and I'll go into the display in more detail. But as you can see, the workmanship and the use of materials is very nice in the Acura, and I think that's where it stands out. More soft touch, more, you, know, you can see the nice stitching for the Type S, just a, a much uh, more thought towards that layout. Very ergonomic, as I mentioned a few times. It just everything just works exactly where it's been placed. The the, the phone holder for charging doesn't flop around. Uh, the cups are big for for nice big coffee cups, and they're easy to reach while you're driving. These little things really make a difference. A couple of displays there, both an 11 inch um, driver's display and 11.3 infotainment, which I'll walk through in a sec. Um, just again, door pockets, the the center console space. There's there's a lot of um, thought that went on into uh, the work here and the usability of this front space. Some quick notes about the interior. As you can see, you're seeing a lot of GM stuff in here, and that's understandable. But that's a good thing because I really do like the way GM instrumentation is on these newer Ultium based platform products. You have a nice easy driver binnacle with some customization. Uh, I've got set to show me kind of efficiency as I go. Sorry for the glare. You've got your nice stocks here, gear changer stocks, so similar to what you'll see in the Blazer and the other products as well. The Lyric, um, you've got your ADAS controls here, and you've got your music and, and some um, heated steering wheel and that kind of stuff here. Nice finish on the steering wheel. This does have the Super Cruise option as well from GM, which as you've seen by other videos, works extremely well in areas that are mapped, only on roads that are mapped. So for long highway driving on major highways, sit back, relax, because Super Cruise does a really, really good job of, the, of hands-free driving, but you still need to be able to maintain control. What, one thing I love about this, and I'm a bit of a, as I mentioned in other videos, I've got a mixed bag because I own a Tesla Model 3 with, with has hardly any physical buttons at all. And I'm used to it and I use all the HVAC and stuff. And I can tell you sometimes it is a pain in the butt um, to do that. So I do miss having some dedicated functional controls for things like HVAC, uh, which are very important in climate country, in countries that have four seasons like here in Canada, where we, we have a lot of different weather all throughout the year and utilizing an efficient HVAC is extremely important in maintaining safety in a vehicle. And I really love the layout that that Acura has done again by just deploying the Ultium based platform and a lot of those components from GM. This is very similar to what you see in the GM vehicles. Um, easy, you know, one button to do different functions, easy to see, easy to tap, you know, uh, temperature controls, all that kind of stuff. 
So I uh, turned the fan off because it's gonna start blowing. Um, so really, really nice. You can do things on soft touch, but I just like the manual stuff. It's fast and easy and uh, it, it just everything's really, really nice. Even things like, you know, mirror controls, door controls, uh, settings, that kind of stuff. The main infotainment being an 11-inch screen is nice. You've got a couple of menus here. Uh, so it's underpinned by Google, of course, and that's what GM has moved to. This does support wireless ca uh, Apple CarPlay. I've been using it all week, and it works extremely well. Once you set it up, it just goes. Uh, it supports Android Auto. So I get asked that a lot about wireless Apple CarPlay. People think that that's a huge thing. So there you go. I've told you that. It's got nice music for different settings. This one has XM activated and you can probably download other apps. This does support over the air updates. Again, running Google Maps from that perspective works well. You've seen that implementation and then you have controls. There is a HUD in this. Now I have it off. Um, but there is, as you can see, the glass for the HUD. I just don't have it on because it has this beautiful driver binnacle here with a lot of nice, clear information. And I just think having a HUD on on top of this is just too much. And sometimes I feel, folks, there can be too much information coming at you. And that's why we see potentially um, more, more accidents because people are not focused enough as much as they should be. So just some settings here. And it's got nice ambient light. Again, this is a luxury vehicle. And I can tell you the fit and finish in this is fantastic. It's just extremely nice. And that's where Acura takes the that vehicle and amps it up to their spec. Um, and, you know, this one being the Type S, the top spec. But it's, it's just a gorgeous interior. The seats are extremely comfortable, heated and cooled. And the cooling has been really nice in this hot summer that we're having right now. Um, it's got a beautiful panoramic sunroof, which opens up uh, three quarters of the way down the vehicle as well. If you want open air, works really, really well. Also has a shade that comes across. Um, you know, Acura's thought of everything in this vehicle. There, every convenience that basically you, they think you can need, you know, memory seating, all that stuff is in this vehicle and everything works extremely well. Even the rain sensing wipers, and sometimes that can be the bane of existence for vehicles, but they work really well. We had... The remnants of Hurricane Barrel come through Toronto area a couple days ago where we had 40, 50 millimeter downpour rains, which were on and off. And as you're driving, it changes moment by moment. And the wipers were fantastic in keeping up with that. I didn't have to adjust or play around with them at all. And I can tell you, had that been my Model 3, it would have drove me nuts because they still haven't got it in this uh, camera-based stuff. So Elon, you know, go back to rain sensors. Everything's not vision. doesn't always work. So that's what I have to say about this interior. It's just absolutely fantastic. Let me show you the rear. What I just wanted to say about the rear is that there's more than enough leg room. I have the seat where I have it, as you can see, tons of leg room. Even with this roof, I've got a fist of headroom and I'm 5'7". Nice HVAC vents, uh, controls there. Uh, no cooling seats in the back. So probably, probably the only thing that this misses from a features is that small thing. Remember, the VinFast VF8 had rear cooling seats as well as heated. That's a big deal. A lot of people miss that for a cheaper vehicle. I'm just saying. So for the price point, I figured Acura might have been able to put that in, but they haven't. Um, and it does make a difference for those rear passengers that don't have to sweat it out. So anyway, nice roof, nice visibility. It's very comfortable. I've had some people back here. They've been very comfortable. The B&O sound system is just fantastic. Nice back seat, comfortable place for passengers to be in, especially for longer trips. I want to give you a look at the trunk storage space or the boot storage space. It does have, of course, um, electronically controlled latch to open up uh, struts to open up the rear hatch. You can do that by key fob, by a button inside a remote. There's also a, uh, in this model, you can sweep your leg underneath the bumper and it will open as well. So as I zoom in, you can see it's got a pretty good amount of storage space behind that second row that's up. You have 793 liters of space, which is about 28 cubic feet. Um, once I put that row down, as you'll see in these pictures, it really does increase the space uh, to a nice amount. Now it's got a couple of buttons um, that you can push to lower those seats. Um, they just kind of flop down, but you have to manually raise them. But that increases the space to 1,722 liters or just almost 61 cubic feet. So that's a good amount of uh, storage space with a nice flat floor as well. Now this one came equipped with some updated uh, matting, uh, mat covers, floor mats. So as you can see, it kind of covers up that cargo space that's underneath there. It's not deep because of the big battery, but there is enough room to store some small things. Uh, you could flatten down your charging cable and that kind of stuff. So definitely there's room to put stuff. All right, just some of my thoughts about driving the this Acura ZDX for the week. Um, I'll tell you folks, 
I've been saying throughout this video what a very nice vehicle this is and it just it just goes it's just such a nice smooth I'm going to close and have the sunroof open a little bit here pop that down very quiet um, we're driving yesterday you could barely barely hear the motor whine you have to really listen to hear uh, a motor humming away here on the electric motor side it is such a quiet comfortable car they've done great soundproofing the air suspension is really nice um, I think with these 22 inch tires it's a little bit of a rougher ride than I would have thought and I say that with a grain of salt because the ride's not rough I'm not trying to insinuate it is it's just I think if I would have probably gone with 20 inch tires on this to get a little bit more air and soften it up even better but I don't think they're available when you go to the Type S, but you'd have to talk to the dealer. So 21s or 20s, but 22s are pretty big, means a lot less rubber, um, a lot less tire, much more lower profile. That would probably be a, a pick that I would have on this car if I had to nitpick at something. But everything has just been phenomenal to drive, really responsive steering. Hey, it's the Type S, so it's got some performance built into it with the suspension, the handling, the tweaking there. Um, you know, I, I haven't had the need to unload the power on this at all all week. I've been driving very normally uh, in normal states and just, you know, going where I need to go effortlessly. This car has just been such a pleasure to drive. I did a couple of cross Toronto highway runs on it, mainly a lot of city back and forth to work. Um, you know, I'll put up a chart here after this segment about my driving range and the efficiencies that I've seen within that. But I've been, it's, I'm hitting almost 300 kilometers. I'm about 48% or 47% at 300 kilometers already. Uh, I've just, it's just been effortless. I just haven't had to think, of, I charged it on Monday and here I am Saturday and I haven't had to think about charging and I'm still below, just, just below 50% folks. So, and this is normal kind of driving and that's what people tend to forget when they're looking at an EV, oh, I have range anxiety, but what do you do in your normal, day-to-day -day stuff my normal day-to-day -day week if I don't go on any long trips anywhere even if I go to downtown Toronto or something it's still only four or five hundred kilometers a week that's it and these capable these cars nowadays these vehicles are capable of four to five hundred kilometers and very capable of doing that obviously in the winter you do take a bit of a hit but I just haven't thought about it I charged it up the first night and that's it I haven't had to think about it so this thing has been efficient for the size and weight that it is. Again, I'll clarify that. It's not the most efficient, but it's been doing really well. And I have run the AC on a couple of days full time because we've had some really hot, sticky, humid weather here and I've needed to, to cool off. So even with the air conditioning running, you see this thing drop down to three and a half, three point four 3.4 um, kilometers per kilowatt hour, but I've had it as high as 5.4. Uh, in the early morning when I'm not really running anything. So it's got a pretty good range of efficiencies of, uh, of that. You can, you can change that into the metrics you need. What else can I say? I mean, you know, ergonomics, the drive, the seating, uh, the conveniences around that, the cooled, heated seats, all that kind of stuff, the windows, everything just is really nice. It's a very comfortable car to drive for long periods of time and short periods of time. There's lots of room here in the back seat as well for up to five people no problem and some stuff doesn't have the biggest luggage space uh in the in the market i would say but it definitely has ample market space again you got those batteries eating some of that sub trunk area so you don't get a ton of space there but you know this is very capable i'm sure you can throw a roof rack on here if you needed to throw like one of those uh, Thule cargo carriers or something for longer trips and I mentioned towing capacity as well. This thing has the ability to tow up to 3,500 pounds, so you could take it for a nice camping trip uh, or a utility trailer and load stuff in it. This is a very capable vehicle, um, extremely capable and comfortable and quiet. You know, I'm pushing 90 kilometers an hour now. I'm not having to raise my voice. Um, this, uh, this is just a, a really, really nice vehicle to drive, holds the ground. Um, again, um, you can feel the weight in it. There's no doubt about it that this is a heavy vehicle, like all electrics are, in, uh, compared to a nice vehicle of the same size and class. Uh, but this thing handles it quite well. And again, with that 50-50 weight distribution, it's a really nice touch to, to give you good handling. Uh, you can do some spirited driving in this vehicle as much as you're going to in a family SUV. I'll preface that um, and, and remain safe. The brakes, these Brembo brakes, I believe they're um, four piston. And if I'm wrong, I'll flash that on the screen. 
uh, brakes, they stop phenomenally. Now they're available only on the type um, on this Type S uh, upgrade, um, but I would suspect even the base brakes are really good that are on the um, the other model. Uh, but they stop extremely well. I've had to do a couple of panic stops uh, with, with in situations, and they just they man they hammer on. So even with Regen going as well, and as I mentioned, you know the. Uh, if I haven't mentioned it already, the deployment of the regeneration is extremely well. And if you don't drive EVs, you don't understand how hard that is to get it really nice and smooth. When you're looking at utilizing the regenerative capabilities in electric motors and the functional of physical brakes as well, and trying to marry those two in a seamless, um, very uh, nice and smooth fashion. That's a hard thing to do. Tesla does it very well. The Nissan Leaf has done it very well and some others. But there are some others that don't do it that or that don't do it as well. Um, that you can feel some of the jerkiness. You can hear when the, the brakes clamp when you're stopped at a light, let's say. Um, but this thing, you know, it's just like, you know, I, that's it. And it's, I let, press the accelerator and I go as I can go as slow as I want. If I want to creep at one centimeter an hour, I can creep at one centimeter an hour in this mode. Um, it's just that it's really nice implementation of uh, both the regenerative braking and then of course it's got auto hold when you're in regen mode so the brakes will clamp on and hold you even on an incline, which is nice. So marrying those two together, the technologies and doing it seamlessly and very smooth is a hard thing to do. So my hat's off. A game. I think this is actually a tad better than the Blazers implementation. In being that it's the same platform, I'm thinking Acura has tweaked something in the brakes to be able to do that. That in the way that they use utilize their braking system, especially maybe because these have the Brembo upgrades as well, that could attribute to it. I don't know, but the implementation. I, I can't stress enough until you get in and drive this and try it for yourself and play with that. You know, go to slow down nice and easy and go to a stop and listen to see. Um, there's nobody behind me, so I'm stopping. Listening to see if, if the brakes clamp, if you hear any noise on that as they hold the vehicle, right? If I put my brake on the pedal, auto hold goes in. I don't hear n anything. It's, it's like nothing. And then let, let, to add the accelerator, you don't hear an unclamping or phys any physical noise there with mo most systems you do. So again, that I'm not going to I'm going to talk 5 minutes just on that, but it's it's a small thing, but it's extremely important because to me what it shows is is the amount of effort and thought that Honda and Acura have put into this vehicle in in the way that it's appointed and the way that everything works within the features and those appointments. And I think that's if there's anything to take away from this video other than the fact that this is a very competent, capable and fantastic driving all electric with great range is the fact that everything on here that is optioned as a feature works and it works extremely well and very smoothly and very elegantly. Uh, that's probably the great word to describe this vehicle. Hope you enjoyed all that information about this Acura ZDX uh, all electric. Price point is probably one of the, just the small negatives I would have to say about this. Not to say it's not worth the value, but when you look at where it fits into the pricing market, at least in Canada and most likely in the US, there's a lot of competition in that space. So you've got to really look at if this is enough of a differentiator to, for you to make that decision. The A spec dual motor. All-wheel drive a variant here in Canada. MSRP is at eighty-four thousand nine hundred ninety dollars. This version at ninety-one thousand four hundred ninety. Um, it's got a bunch of options, so it puts it up into the, almost the ninety-five, ninety-six thousand dollar range with just a couple of options because it comes pretty well fully loaded. I think the mats and something else is, is optional here, as you've seen. So it's a really nicely loaded. It's got everything and everything. As I, I can't emphasize the fact enough of how easy it was for me to get into this vehicle, set my profile up, set my settings, and then get in and drive it all week. And everything worked extremely well. No software hiccups, no glitches, anything like that. It was just a fantastic vehicle to run. The way that they've deployed the one pedal driving on this is fantastic. It's one of the best I've seen out there. And that's a hard thing to do if you don't drive a lot of all electrics and try out the one pedal in each of them. 
you won't really understand maybe what I'm saying because every time I, I test a car, if it has the ability to one pedal drive or, or use multiple regen modes, I do test them at least so I can get an opinion on that. And Tesla has it extremely refined. They're probably one of the gold standards on there. Even the Leaf have had great, has great one pedal driving. They kind of started that more an, an emphasis on it. And whereas you don't even really feel it, you can get you can get this down. It's got a couple of settings. I'm leaving it in medium mode. There's a high or a strong and a medium mode and then off. And I'm leaving it kind of in medium regen all week. That seems to be a good setting. It's not as aggressive, but it can be aggressive if you fully let off the accelerator. And what that means is that with a couple of practices, you can get to really nice, clean, quiet, calm stops, and then you can accelerate nice and smoothly as well. I've left this in normal driving mode. There isn't an eco, it's either normal or sport, or you can individualize some of it. So I've kind of left it in normal um, all week, and it's just been fantastic. It's been really effortless uh, to using the, the one pedal driving, especially when it stops and, you, and the, the brakes clamp on to hold it. Some systems you feel that, there's a bit of a, a lurch, and then when, when they let go, you hear it, and there's a bit of a jolt. Just a very slightly one. This one is so smooth, it's like cutting butter with a knife. It's just, they've done it really well. So little things like this show the build quality and the thought that Honda Acura has put into their vehicles, which they always do, to really elevate this to a premium all-electric experience. And that's what I could say is what would justify the price on this. If you love the brand and if you want all the creature comforts, but in a very capable package, you know, being able to drive 450 kilometers in the summertime without breaking a sweat in this, if that city driving probably be closer to 500 kilometers on a full charge, that's outstanding in a vehicle that weighs over 6,000 pounds. You know, folks, and when I put that into perspective, for me to do that 500 kilometers cost me about, um, I would say probably about eight bucks, seven to eight dollars of home charging, Canadian. You think about how much you're paying for gas to do that same four to 500 kilometers. Let's just say 500 kilometers for eight bucks. The, for a vehicle that, that is this big and can operate that cheaply, I tell you, that's kind of one of the golden nuggets of EVs that a lot of people forget. They, they focus on other misinformation and not really the reality. So it's a great vehicle, you know, in this larger mid-size Blazer. Certainly this is more than the Blazer EV if you're thinking about this and very comparable. To the Blazer except for the range and I think some of the creature comforts are a little bit more enhanced and, and refined in this vehicle. Um, so it's really going to be up to you. Definitely it's a long-winded segment here to say absolutely recommend this vehicle if you're thinking of uh, looking at the, the ZDX product or the ZDX product definitely take a close look at it. They've done a fantastic job. They've just knocked this out of the ballpark home run grand slam Good job on Honda Acura. Um, it's definitely worth looking at. And that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks very much for tuning in. Appreciate it. All my contact details are coming up again. I want to thank Honda Canada for giving me this Acura vehicle. Appreciate it for a week. I look forward to getting to the prologue, which is going to be a little bit more lower priced easier entry point for this size of a vehicle without all the bells and whistles. I am really will be super excited to get into that. A little bit more of a plain Jane-ish, but very functional and doable vehicle. And that's kind of Honda's claim as well. They just get things done. So uh, we're really thankful for them. Uh, everybody stay safe and uh, don't, don't forget to uh, follow me on my channels. There's lots of stuff that I'm involved in. And until the next show, I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.